Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another edition of my music collection. This one, a 33 CD collection of Rat and related band projects. So this is in honor of the band forming in 1976 and this being their 45th anniversary. Um, I wanted to go through this and I've got a huge uh, you know, box here, collection of these. You've seen me with some of these in the past and so we're gonna dive into that and talk about all these related albums albums but before we do if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button please click the button also leave a comment hit like all those things help support my channel I would greatly appreciate it and if you enjoyed this video or know someone that would please share it out on social media I would also appreciate that and of course by subscribing you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music just like this with the new music collection 33 CD rat and related band collection here so you know, along with uh, Motley Crue, Doc and Rat was right at the forefront of the glam metal movement, but the band itself actually started all the way back in 1976, and at one point they even had Jake E. Lee on guitars uh, back in 1981. There's some recordings of that in this collection. But in 1983, they did sign a recording contract and released their debut album. And then a year later, 1984, they released their uh, you know, debut studio album uh, out of the cellar. And of course that just kicked off everything at that point for them. And since that time they put out eight studio albums. Uh, then there was Arcade, they have two studio albums. Stephen Piercy's put out five solo albums. Warren D. Martini, their original guitar player, even put out one solo album. And there's also uh, various related projects, 17 albums of that for a total of 33 rat and related band side projects. So going back, um, this is one of the Rock Candy reissues, a really great sound, great booklets in these things. And so I've got the first four have been reissued on Rock Candy Records and are definitely worth uh, picking up, especially if uh, you still have the um, old original pressings. The sound is so much better on Rock Candy, so highly recommend that. Um, I do have the debut EP on vinyl. Don't have it handy though. I have ripped it down to a CD just to uh, be able to get at it much quicker. Now, I've talked about this before. This is actually my favorite Rat album, Detonator, which came out in 1990. Uh, just a stellar album. That one there definitely took on that glam sound even more. Um, having um, Desmond Child come in and co-write and produce the album and so forth. And following that, uh, they did put out a best of at that time called Rat and Roll 8191. And I did meet the band at one point and get them all to sign it, although it's kind of messy looking. They just scribbled right across it there, but I did meet them. So um, got that sign. And unfortunately, at that point, the band breaks up there, but they, they get back together fairly quickly around 97 and they put out Collage. If you're not familiar with this album, highly recommend it. Um, it collected together old stuff that had not been released, including um, unreleased material that they then completed and put out. So it is considered a studio album by them, although it is a collection of mostly unreleased tracks that they then went in and worked on. And um, then I believe this was a 1999, we get uh, this album here, self-titled Rat. It was on the newly formed portrait label that was trying to get a restart to that glam metal movement. They did sign other artists like Damn Yankees and Cinderella, but those albums got shelved, although Rats came out. And this one had a newer sound to it. It is still definitely Rat, but it was modernized. Uh, so it, I don't think that's why it quite took off. And they did put out another best of, at this point, the very best best of rat um, release so there's a couple of these out there just those two but um, you know not not anything really worth diving into a couple unreleased tracks per each one but that's about it and then they did do this album here infestation where they brought in Carlos Cavazzo on lead guitar from quiet riot really great album worth checking out too but now we're gonna dive into you know what I think is the cream of the crop here this is the meat and potatoes it's all those related projects and everything else we know those rat albums so I wanted to get that out of the way there now we're gonna talk about these other ones so Warren D Martini crazy enough to sing to you solo album from 1996 Japanese only release of this thing here CDs in the player right now listening to it that album there's a much more bluesy album it's got Dweezil Zappa on it playing it's um as I always kind of describe it as imagine if you took all that glam metal stuff out of rat 
what would it sound like? Um, he sings on it, so I mean, it's a very different sounding record, but if you're curious like me, well worth checking out. Um, Stephen Piercy was the first, though, to go and do something else with Arcade, something significant. 1993, this debut studio album came out. Uh, this one just came in at uh, number two on my top five glam metal albums for 1993. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you're curious to check it out. Fantastic debut album by them. It's you know, the, the Lost Rat album, in my opinion. Everything about it screams rat. But it came out in 1993 under Arcade. Uh, Fred Corey was in the band from Cinderella. Uh, Frankie Wilsey from uh, Sea Hags is in there, among other people. I mean, it was bit, basically five guys from little smaller known um, glam metal bands along with Stephen Piercy, or he made the fifth person, but very, very good stuff. They did make a second album called Arcade, or A2, I should say. This one here stripped away that glam sound to become a much more, uh, have much more of that punk sound to it, and much more raw uh, sound than what the first one was. But again, it's still Stephen Piercy. It's got his vocals. That styling of how he wrote things is still there. He's been at the forefront of rats since 1976, writing, playing guitar, lead guitar, everything. So uh, definitely in there. I mean, if you think that you can't have rat without any of the other guys, uh, the band's always been Stephen's baby. So uh, he then uh, started doing these... Um, you know, other releases like this here, A3, it's a live and unreleased collection of arcade material. And then we got another one here, this one here, A4, but this one was called Calm Before the Storm. It was a live album. This was a website only. He starts doing these on a Top Fuel label uh, off his website. It was the only place you could order these, but very well done. Um, you know, they were printed, you can tell they're definitely, you know, printed items and things of that nature. A uh, little note from Stephen Piercy here too, uh, just letting you know the archives and stuff and what was coming out. So for a while he had his own label. Uh, 1996, he formed an industrial band called Vertex. Uh, this one here did not have an album cover, at least not for me. Uh, probably had one originally, but uh, my copy did not. I got it as a promo. So uh, very, very different than rat style stuff, but interesting to see what he tried his hand at. He then went in that much more even raw or punk rock sound with Vicious Delight. Uh, this one even came out on the Triple X label, which is an alternative punk label. So he managed to get signed to that, um, put out this album here. And again, he continued this stuff with his online Top Fuel label. He formed a band called Nitronic, went out on tour, uh, signed them across here. This came out in 2000, called DOA Live from 2000. These were even more um, raw in production. I don't know if you can't really tell necessarily by the paper quality here, but these are definitely, you know, printed at home kind of things like that. Burn CDs that he made himself, you can see the underside, but you know, the discs, they're still uh, regular printed discs done very well for what they were. Um, sold them off his website, very cool stuff. Very raw, he started really digging into demos and live stuff that was raw. Uh, so I can't say the stuff is super high quality. He then put this out, Mickey Rat Garage Days, uh, 78 to 81, got some of the earliest material. Again, he was signing these. He did them, always did them on the CD jewel cases, which I didn't really care for, but um, you know, they were signed from him. And this one here has, uh, you know, 10 tracks on it. Fairly good quality actually on this stuff for being as old as it is. But sometimes you hear the tape snag or, you know, uh, stretch within it. So you do get that. They're CDs, they're as good as they're gonna get though. Another Mickey Rat album from back in the day. This one here, live album, In Your Direction. Uh, 1981 was the recording of this one here. Let me just see who plays on this one, if it actually states. Um, yeah, Jakey Lee is on this recording here. So this is an entire live album with Jakey Lee, future Ozzy Osbourne guitar player uh, on that. Uh, this was a pretty cool one here. He released this one um, as uh, you can see here, Stephen Piercy, Rat Attack, only one T. He was not in the band Rat at this time. And it actually originally came out under the Mickey Rat name, but was sued by Rat at the time. And so he had to take off the one T on it. 20 hits, 20 years, they're all re-recordings 
of Steven Piercy in the current lineup at the time, but they're really great. And it featured some unreleased material that was Mickey Rat era getting recorded for the first time, which is why I picked that up. Now here's one, Piercy Hagar Trash came out in 2004. Again, it's a web only release straight from his website. Just show you some of these things. They're not all that interesting, but for those of you that uh, don't have these and are interested, this is the only way that I know you guys can see it. Um, and again, a burn disc, but very well done production, you know, or however it is they mount or print on the discs. So this one here, Chris Hagar, original guitarist in Mickey Rat, before Jakey e. Lee, back together here, um, did an album together of 10 songs very good stuff. 1981, they were going to, they formed this band, they were going to put it out, didn't happen. He later develops it into arcade. But these 10 demos here, great stuff if you can get a hold of it. I searched high and low today, can't find it on eBay, no re reference of it on Google. Went to a couple MP3 download sites that always have the rare stuff. This isn't on it, so found out I've got a pretty cool collector's item there that I didn't even know about. Around this time, he started putting out these. Uh, early solo, they're not solo albums, but they did come out under his name before and Laughter, which was a collection of rarities and stuff from Rat and all the different projects he had done. But everything on the discs was unreleased and he did a second one here years later. Uh, this one here, another one of those web only releases, 20 tracks. And again, the quality of this stuff ranges from very, very good to uh, demo cassette tape re type recordings. Uh, generally, most of that stuff features towards the end of the albums. And some other even sort of more rough stuff that he did, he put out some other ones. This one here, Rattus Erectus, a collection of stuff from 76 to 82 from that era, signed again on the disc, so I've hung on to them for that reason, but no packaging otherwise. I think these discs were $10. I mean, they were never a lot, and he got a lot of cool stuff. So I showed you a version of this one that he later releases, slightly different album cover, full art, but this one here being a signed one. So he would sell these like a year early this way, then he would officially release them. A lot of times the official ones came with bonus material or vice versa. So uh, this one here, first solo album, Fuel, or one of his first ones. I think it was actually the second one, but again, he signed it there. This one only had eight tracks on it. The later version has more, and that's what we're gonna dive into right now. So yeah, actually first solo album was this one, Social Intercourse, and I bought this one from him. It's a little hard to see, but again, signed there on top. 2002 was that album there. Then the one we were just talking about, Fueler. Again, slightly different coloration to the artwork, but this one here had 11 tracks, so three additional ones that were not on um, the one that I would picked up before, so it was worth picking those up and getting them. Then he did, this was really cool, Stripped. It's an acoustic unplugged album, and uh, it's got some cool stuff on here beyond just rap songs. This was done in 2006, very, very good quality recording. It was on a, a, a label called Sidewinder, again, a label that tried re-signing a bunch of these glam bands. There's been a number of attempts for these artists to get back on labels and start putting stuff out. Frontiers is really the only label that's been able to master that. Here we have another one called Under the Skin, another great solo album. This was sort of what I would call, you know, his first return to the sound that was really rat. Then more, uh, Closely and Lately being Smash, which is a fantastic solo album, and his latest one, which I think is his best, View to a Kill. This one here, 11 tracks on it, really great stuff. If you like Rat and you like Infestation and some of the, the newer Rat that was out, I highly, highly recommend these two solo albums, Smash and View to a Kill. Fantastic, again, on the Frontiers record label. I think that's the label that has really done this. And there you go. Uh, beyond that, there's that cool Stephen Piercy book that is behind me, which is a great, great read if you want to really get into the guts of all of this and what he was going through and all the different projects. How did he survive through the 90s into the 2000s and the rebirth of all of this music where he can now make a living off of it? But what did he do in that downtime? That book tells you, and it's very, very good. Plus there's that DVD there that collects together all the rap music videos. And so all of this together, 33 CDs, those two items, 35 items there, rat and rat related, all for your enjoyment. Hope you guys did. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. 
Let me know your thoughts. I hope everyone has a great day. Take care and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye guys.